So you want to build your own cocktail machine. Well, you'll need these things. And a lot of time. Here's how to do it in six easy steps. Let's get started. Part one, the main shell slash frame. The frame is just two pieces of wood that is cut out via a CNC cutter, but you can just cut two pieces of plywood with a jigsaw and it would be just as nice. We chose our measurements as we had made an arcade machine with the same sides and we thought it looked nice, so we just modified these to use them in this project. We then cut out these metal bars to length based on the length of the machine. This will stabilize the frame and act as holders for the pumps. We also drill some holes into the upper bar as these will be used for holding the pumps. Now to assemble the whole thing. We just screwed the sides together via the back panel and then we added an electronics compartment even though this isn't necessary. You can always mount your electronics on the back side of the thing or something like that. Then we added the rails by screwing them into the sides. And then we added the upper bar where the pumps will be later on. Now add this micro switch to the end here. It is just put in place with two screws. Be sure to align this with the screw on the sleigh which I will talk about later on. Part 2. The sleigh. The sleigh is based on the following mechanics. A stepper motor runs underneath it, like shown here. And then this stepper motor runs via the belt under the aluminum bar. As you can see, here is the screw for the end switch, which I talked about earlier. We started making this sleigh by cutting the base of it into size and then cutting the top layer of polycarbonate to make it waterproof. Other than that we added some LEDs to make it look nice and then we assembled it all. To make this then start by cutting into the base of the sleigh to get ready to mount the wheels. Then cut threads into it based on the size of the screws you are using, like we are doing here. The wheels can then be mounted onto the sleigh with some screws. To make this part, which holds the belt on which the stepper motor runs, we took a long piece of this and cut it into size, like this. We then added the belt on it via some double sided tape. This tiny part is then put onto the main rail on which the wheels are on, again with double sided tape. After all of this is done, the final step is to mount your choice of stepper motors underneath the base. As you can see here, we just used the mount that the stepper motor came with and then screwed it directly to the plate. Under that, we just managed the wires in this big piece of wire. The screw for the end switch is just screwed into the base plate via some cut threads. The sleigh can now move as illustrated here in this video. We mounted the sleigh to the rails by unscrewing two of the wheels and then mounting the sleigh onto the first rail with the stepper motor underneath it. Then we screwed the two wheels on. This should tighten the sleigh to the rails so that it can move without slipping. You can always adjust the tightness by putting the screws a bit further up or down. The sleigh is now ready to be programmed so it can move back and forth on the rails. Part 3. Moving the sleigh. Now that the sleigh and the frame is ready to go, it's time to start coding and making something move. As you can see, we spent quite a lot of time figuring this out on our own, so be happy that we did the footboard for you. Let's begin. Start by attaching the wires to the stepper motor control board like shown on this schematic here, and putting the wires from the control board into the Arduino also as shown. You can use any digital port you like, 
These are just for demonstration purposes. They can easily be changed in the code. The code provided is simple. I just made sure that I could move the sleigh x amounts of steps one way and then the other way. You can find an example of this code here in the description below. You should get a similar result like shown on the video here where we tested the sleigh for the first time. Other than that I also made sure to code that if it touches the end switch then it would move back a bit. The code is all commented and can be found in the description below. The end switch should be wired like shown here. Part number 4. Making the pumps. Now on to making these pumps. Start by 3D printing the STL files linked to you in the description. This will probably take a few days, so meanwhile experiment with your fancy new glass moving machine if you want to. When the pumps are entirely printed, you can paint them if you want to to match the color scheme. Oh, and by the way, make sure to tighten your GoPro mount before filming. I said... <clears throat> no mind. Oh well, let's get on with it. As you can see, the stepper motor cannot quite fit in this printed part. This might be due to warping in the print. So if your pump is giving you trouble, you can drill out this part to make it fit better. As you can see, it fits nicely. Also drill out the mounting hole underneath the pump in this step. Mount the stepper motor with some screws like shown here. And then you can add the assembled disc part with the ball bearings, like shown here. Then you can put the tubing inside the pump. The pump works, like shown here, where it pushes the liquid through the tube. Now you can screw the upper part in, and it's done. When all of these pumps are assembled, you can mount them on top of the upper bar that is in the frame. We added them with some screws and added some rubber underneath them to reduce noise. As you can see here, we also added a small polycarbonate plate where the tubes can dispense from. You can use any wood or something like that to make something similar. Now you can wire the pumps to the Arduino via the same schematic as the one from the sleigh. Just use some different digital ports. The schematic can be found in the description. Part 5. Setting up the bulb positions. Now on to the big part of the code. Making the sleigh move to a certain position and then making the pump pump for a certain amount. Let's start by defining where the tubes for the pumps will be located. We measured this out so that they were evening apart and then wrote this down in the code. Then we calibrated the sleigh in the code so it could be moved to a certain position defined in millimeters. See more of this in the code example in the description. After we were able to move the sleigh to a pump position, we calibrated the pumps so that they were able to dispense based on a defined amount of milliliters. Again, this is shown in the code and you can read more about it on how to calibrate it there. Then we just ran the code on each pump with a certain amount of milliliters and pumped out some water to see if it all worked, and did. The hard part here was writing the code, but this is all done for you and you can freely use my code for your own liking. Part 6. The air pumps. The peristaltic pumps are awesome for dispensing a precise amount of liquid, but the downside of those are their speed. It takes about 7 to 9 seconds to dispense 20 ml of liquid, so it would take forever to fill a cup with these. So we made use of some air pumps to fill up the soda in our machine. These are quite fast and can fill up a cup in about 10 seconds. The downside is that they aren't quite precise, but they will still dispense the asked amount with an error marking of about 5-10%, to which is acceptable when we are dispensing the sodas. They basically work by pumping air into an airtight container, which forces the liquid out of the main tube. We are using some soda bottles to hold the liquid, but any airtight container will do the job just fine. We control the pumps with some basic relays and the wiring can be seen here. The calibre was a bit different with these, as each air pump were different in their speed, so we had to calibrate each and every one of them. In the code example below, you can see how we calibrated each of them and how you can calibrate it too. Congratulations! You just built your own cocktail machine. Now on to coding the app and the Bluetooth module in the Arduino. You can find the code example for these in the description below, and also an example of the app. 
You can also add some LED lights like I did, and you can also add an LCD screen to show the user what is ordered. I also added a proximity sensor to sense when the glass is placed on display. That's it from now. Remember to subscribe and like this video if you liked it. More videos like this will come in the near future. Stay tuned and have fun.